All right. Let's put this over here so it looks like I'm looking at you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending our Monday, July 26, 2021, 7 o'clock meeting of the Berlin Select Board. We are continuing to meet virtually uh, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, let's see. Um, announcements. Uh, meetings of the Berlin Select Board are generally recorded for transmission on both Berlin Cable Access uh, channel and YouTube. Your voice and image or phone number may be recorded. So with that, Margaret, welcome back. As I said to you, we didn't burn the town down while you were gone. So, you know. Thank you. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and you're not allowed to go away again. So just. <laughs> All right, so uh, first up is the approval of the minutes. Uh, on the June 21st, it was approved uh, on uh, July 12th, but a revote is needed to correct unintentional omission of the select board's unanimous 621-3-0 vote approving two statutorily uncollectible EMS ambulance service write-offs totaling $3,595. Uh, so Second. <laughs> All right. Move in a second. Uh, any further questions? All right. Uh, and then let's take a look at the July 12th open session uh, meetings. Were there any comments on those uh, notes as well? Um, no, those look fine. I'm assuming CY is calendar year. Uh, that was on number one. All right, so Mary, we'll just, if you could just, just spell out calendar year. I, I just, you know, it took me a while, and then I figured it out. <laughs> and then I think- It's uh, CY as opposed to FY. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Not everyone knows that. I number number nine, I think the word loom should be spelled L-O-A-M, because it is spelled that way below. That's it. All right, so given those two um, issues, can is there a motion? Did you want to vote on the other one first or just do them together? I figured we could do them together. All right, then I'll move with those changes to July 12th. I'll move to approve both of them. All right. Second. All right, so uh, open a uh, motion and a second on the June 21st and July 12th uh, meeting minutes. Uh, Stone Eye. Hawkins Eye. Key five. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Moving down to correspondence. Margaret, did any come in? Yeah, the, I, the select board has received assorted correspondence, which has been forwarded to you. Um, there was um, an email from one of the cemetery commissioners to the board. I know that I shared that with you. Um, I have also shared it with um, Jim Spinney, who's um, heading up the highway department on an interim basis. So he has that um, as well. Um, this was regarding tree trimming at the cemeteries. Um, uh, and Jim did mention that he's had several compliments on the, uh, the limb trimming um, because the, there were limbs hanging down to the ground. Yeah, um, I, I, vis I visited the cemetery today at uh, just doing a walk after work and it looks actually very nice. Um, can I just add, I did speak with Brenna um, over the weekend and I think it was uh, sort of a request um, on behalf of the cemetery commission for just better communication concerning the cutting, cutting of the maples. Um, I guess it used to work that uh, Mr. Guild, I believe, used to do the cutting and then the cemetery or the highway used to just pick up the brush. Um, and I guess the request is essentially just better communication between them. Just wanted to add that. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Margaret, anything else under correspondence? Um, no, well, I apologize. I've been trying to catch up on emails. I, I think that that's the one that kind of sticks out at the moment. Um, okay. It's always all kinds of activity, but. Um, Understood. All right, so we do have a few folks in the audience. Are there any general public comments? Uh, nope, not seeing any. 
So at 710, we have uh, Chief Clark on. So Chief isn't here yet, um, but Chief Galvin is here if you'd like to switch, yep. switch them. Okay. Sure. Yep, absolutely. Oh, you pumped me up a little, huh? We did. <laughs> Try right. to catch you now. You got lucky tonight. <laughs> right. All right. That's okay. Just take, I was working on something in the hall and it's good timing that I was sitting right here. So perfect. So I, I apologize that um, earlier in the month I had to make a uh, last minute change, but my wife had something came up and my daughter had her last uh, summer basketball game. So I had to be the driver and get to watch her play in her last game for the summer. So I, uh, I appreciate the uh, accommodation and moving to today. Um, uh, Got to accommodate life. It was nice to be able to mm. see her play in, in her last game for the summer. Yeah. So. Um, so where do we stand? Old business, um, body cameras. I know we've talked a lot about this. It's been moving forward slowly. Um, so last month, uh, we worked through some issues with some data transfer with their tech support people. Um, and we're actually at the point where uh, even today we started issuing the cameras to uh, some of the offices and doing some of the initial training. Um, we did find another issue that I'm gonna have to deal with tech support tomorrow, but it appears to be minor. Um, so we, uh, the hope is that within the next week, I'll be able to meet individually uh, with all the officers, issue the cameras to the full-timers, train the part-timers that'll be working this week, um, and then give them a week or so to, to kind of play with them. What I've told the officers, I've issued them already is, you know, if you're watching your crews or you're doing something in the station, make some tests, you know, use the camera, make some videos, practice the uploads and the tagging um, so that we're prepared um, in the next week or two weeks and uh, to get them up and running in August. Um, you know, really looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's been a kind of a long time coming since we got the grant. Um, and it's something I think that's going to be important, not only here in Berlin, but in, in policing in general as we move through uh, through police reform. So it'll be uh, it'll be nice to get those up and running. And, uh, you know, when I actually talk about some stuff later on um, in the report, we had a Bolton officer with a camera that uh, that kind of gave us some help in an incident as well. Um, so June was relatively quiet, which is not uh, unusual for us. Um, you know, usually we would have some more activity going on with the school with the end of the school year. Unfortunately, with COVID, those, those George's Island trip and uh, we had kind of a modified field day. Um, we didn't get to do the things that we normally would have done, um, but uh, things are getting to be more normal. Um, but we had, you know, uh, just over 650 calls for service, you know, four with criminal charges, two arrests. Um, unfortunately, we arrested I remember a report several months ago about a gentleman who kind of trashed our cells and we had to do a cleanup and all that. Uh, we arrested him again. Um, fortunately for us, the, the courts have held him in custody now. So um, he has not been released uh, back into the community. Um, we had 15 crashes. And we've talked a lot about crashes. Unfortunately, one of those was fatal. Um, and, and it was not a, at the time of the crash, it appeared to be a relatively run of the mill crash. Um, unfortunately, one of the passengers in one of the, in one of the vehicles was older, and uh, a couple of weeks after the crash, as a result of the crash, she ended up passing away. So we are working in conjunction with the Worcester County District Attorney's Office um, to finalize that investigation and determine if there would be any criminal charges to the uh, the other driver. So it was kind of an unfortunate situation, um, and and as I said, it, it seemed like. Not that any crash is, is normal, but just seemed kind of a run of the mill situation. There was nothing at the scene that really um, gave us that concern that it would turn into a, uh, a fatal crash. Um, but as I said, it was relatively quiet month, except for the 14th. Um, June 14th was a little bit of a crazy day. And the, the first case I wanna talk about was, uh, we actually had a Bolton officer there with us that had a body camera. So we re received an initial report of a missing uh, seven year old girl from up at Highland Commons. And we were having a lot of trouble locating the person that was reporting it. Um, so, uh, you know, there were several officers, all of, all of our officers were there, plus some assistance from Bolton. Um, after what seemed like forever, we were able to locate the woman that was reporting it, um, but she was very uncooperative. Um, she said that she was afraid of us. She didn't want to work with us. Um, and as I said, we had body cam the body camera there. So we were able to, to, to record all of our actions and, you know, the actions that our officers had, and they were trying to really work really well with her and, and treat her with respect. Um, but she was up and down emotionally. There was obviously something else going on than just her, her daughter 
being missing. Um, after what seemed, again, what seemed like forever, probably an hour, we were able to determine that uh, her daughter was actually in school in Clinton. And uh, we found that she had actually come to Highland Commons to go to the, uh, the clinic there and was seeking help for um, you know, her condition that day. Um, but she had left before she saw the doctor. Um, we were very fortunate that the doctor actually realized what was going on, that the, there was a patient missing and she came out to us. Um, she was able to work with the woman and eventually we were able to get to the woman transported to the hospital. Um, at the hospital, they determined that her blood alcohol level was uh, the highest blood alcohol level I've ever dealt with someone. It was over 0.4, um, which I'm surprised that she was alive, let alone walking and talking. Um, so if you, to put that in perspective, 0 0.08 um, is the legal limit for driving. And she was over 0.4. Um, it, it, was, it was truly an interesting day just dealing with that case alone. Um, you know, it was fortunate that the doctor worked with us and we were able to get her the help she needed and also make contact with uh, some family to actually get her daughter into the, the proper hands and proper care while her mother got help. Um, so that in and of itself would have been a great day and <laughs> enough to deal with. Um, later on that day, um, a resident called me directly on my cell phone, um, something that happens more often than I'd like to report, um, to say that someone had come knocking on their door, said they were 16 years old, that they were a runaway, and they wanted to charge their cell phone. Um, seemed a little odd when I got the call. Um, I sent an officer up to the area and lo and behold, he locates a 16 year old male walking down the street, um, starts a conversation with him. And that quickly escalated into that individual fighting with the officer and running away. Um, so we set up a perimeter. Um, we really didn't know what we had at that point. Um, so we really had a, a lot of those Suasco um, uh, and the Ross Dam area um, covered with a, uh, with a perimeter. We called and we got the Marlboro Police K-9 to come in to help us with a track. Um, and I, I was actually down on the railroad tracks, um, just kind of waiting to see what would happen. And here he comes walking towards me. I was able to flush him back up um, into the backyards of some homes on Derby Road, where um, several of the other officers in the K-9 actually were. Um, and we were able to take him into custody. Um, when we took him into, and so what, what it turned out that he was a runaway from a school in Natick, um, the Brandon school. And, uh, from my, my past life used to uh, work with kids from there a lot. Um, kids that would run away and, and being in, in working in Wayland, um, we were right next door to the school right on the town line and, and we would interact with those kids a lot. Never something I would thought we would see here. Um, so this, this young man had actually run down the mass pike, um, because the mass pike is right where the school is. Um, he got picked up by a state trooper and uh, nicely dropped off at Solomon Pond um, to, and made his way. So that, that's, that's another issue in and of itself. And we've tried to determine how that happened and, and still haven't really figured that out. Um, but what, what really was kind of nice at the end is that, so when we took him into custody, we, we didn't handcuff or anything. We just kind of were all standing there talking to him. He was laying in the bushes next to the house. And uh, we didn't realize it at the time, but he had been on the phone with his aunt um, when we approached him and that phone call stayed open the entire time. So later that, that day, um, the aunt actually talked to Sergeant Shartner and she was so complimentary into how the officer had treated him. Um, she said she was very nervous because he had told her that he punched a police officer and ran away. And the fact that, you know, we just had a conversation with him. We tried to figure out what was going on. Um, you know, he's just a, a young man, both his parents have died. Um, he's had a lot of things go on in his life. Um, we were able to, to reunite him with his aunt and, uh, and hopefully um, we haven't heard anything from him since. And uh, hopefully he's getting the, uh, the care that he needs and things are, uh, things are moving forward to, uh, for him as well. Um, also uh, last month, oh, sorry. Congratulations on that for a job well done. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah I'll yeah, tell you, it, it, was, it was really refreshing to, to get that call later on from the aunt um, because that's just kind of what we do. Um, but to have it recognized by somebody was nice. And it was actually the second time that, uh, that I, we received a call like that. Um, I received a call from, uh, from Thomas Andrew. Um, and he, you know, he started out telling a story that he was working from home and he went out on the deck to have a cigarette. And uh, he noticed that I and another police officer were interacting with a truck driver. And I think I may have told you this story. I don't remember. Um, and a, a tractor trailer had pulled out of National Lumber and broken down right on Pleasant Street at the intersection. 
So, you know, we were having a, just a conversation about what was going on, talking about the tow truck coming, um, just n nothing eventful. Um, our newest officer, Dylan Soldi, Dylan ha happened to be coming up Pleasant Street and saw that we were stopped. So he stopped to find out what was going on. So now there's three police officers and the truck driver. Um, and not that it really mattered in the situation. It did to me in my thinking and how we were perceived, but the truck driver was black. Um, so now looking from the outside in, there's three police officers standing around a black truck driver at an intersection in little old Berlin. Um, and Thomas had seen this and he watched and you know, he, he, he just called again to compliment because you know, we probably had a 30, 45 minute interaction with the gentleman where he took Dylan into his truck um, he showed them the, the trucking logs that truckers use, both electronic and paper. And it really became a learning experience um, for one of our officers. And, and again, it was just a simple interaction where we stopped to offer assistance. Um, but that my concern became, what does everyone that's driving by think? Um, and then to hear from Thomas later on that he watched the interaction um, and, and was just proud to say that that was our police department and how our police department acted. So it was, you know, two, two good things in a month that happened that were, uh, that were very important. Um, also, um, I had mentioned before and sent out a message to, to the town about uh, the Federal Railroad Administration's filming its uh, safety video, um, really became somewhat uneventful. Um, Deputy Chief uh, Desitel and I both participated. Um, they, they really had the train just come down the tracks towards Linden Street. Um, we flagged the train to stop so it didn't block traffic. Um, they had the, the deputy and I each read some, uh, some lines from a script that they're gonna use for voiceover in the safety video. And then uh, they had the ambulance stage to show what happens if a train blocks a piece of emergency equipment and the train moved on. It was pretty much a short uneventful uh, activity and day, but it was kind of neat to be part of it. And it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what the safety video looks like when it comes out, when the, uh, when the feds put that out. So, um, just a couple of other things to quickly touch on, and I'll go deeper into it next, my next report. Um, but we, we had uh, quite a bit of activity this past weekend. Um, you know, and I've talked about overdoses in the past couple of months and things. So, you know, we actually recovered a quantity of fentanyl from, a, you know, a, an address here in Berlin, um, along with a sizable amount of money. Um, it, it just highlights what's still out there. Um, you know, Chief Clark ended up calling in a, a hazardous materials response. And, um, you know, we potentially had officers that had been exposed to that fentanyl. Fortunately, it, it wasn't. Um, but it's just something as a reminder to all of us what's out there and what we, uh, we continue to see in this, this area. And I think that's it. Well, you deal with some very difficult situations. And, uh, you know, I once again want to compliment you. It's, it's been, and your guys. been interesting, interesting lately and you know, the office has done a really good job um, and uh, you know, I'm impressed with what they do and what they did the other night uh, you know, was, was very impressive and I'll talk more about that next month. So. Okay. Scott, any questions? Yeah, the, the other new officer, is she finished? Uh, uh, no, nope, so she is, she's still in training. Um, she is uh, scheduled to graduate October October 2nd, I believe, is the tentative graduation date, as long as they don't have any COVID issues and things with, uh, with their academy class. Um, I actually participated in, or October 1st, sorry, the Friday, um, uh, some of their uh, um, scenarios uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, I went up to the academy and was a role player. So I got to see, see her in action, um, speak to the director quite a bit about her. Um, she is, has a very good reputation in the class. And I think we're gonna be very lucky with the officer we get uh, once she graduates. Great. Uh, the towns around us use body cameras. Are we the one of the last to use one? Or are we still so, early so in this game? Right now, um, the boarding communities, only Bolton has them in, uh, in place and they, uh, they received them through the, uh, the same grant that we did. Um, other than that, there's another grant that actually just came out, which is specifically for body cameras. Um, so I had dinner with several chiefs the other night, and um, there's a lot of discussion in that. They were interested in what what brands and what model we were using, um, and they'll be. You're going to start to see them rolling out just about, I would say, everywhere. Um, I would guess in the next six to twelve months. And then I don't know, Margaret or Chief. I, I almost think that that uh, us starting to use body cameras. Is worthy of a standalone press release that might go out to 
the the item and and just other places. Uh, not, I mean, we've been working on it, Tom. You've been working on it, no, Chief uh, Galvin. You've been working on it for a while. Um, uh, we've talked about it here, but I don't know how much that trickles out outside of the the dozen people who come and watch our meetings here and there. No, I, I definitely uh, agree. I think that's something that that people should know. I mean, they're going to need to know that we're, you know, when we're around, that that we're going to be recording. I think it's important that we uh, we share with the community. And I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll put something together. I'll reach out to Jan. We'll end up doing something on our Facebook page anyways once the, once we have a go live date. Yep. Uh, I've got a few questions before we move up, Chief Clark, to 7.30. Uh, Tom, where are we on the pedestrian signs, the blinky signs? Um, so we have the funding approved. Uh, the pedestrian ones, the highway has the um, those new ones. Uh, I had a conversation with Jim about that last week. So I don't know what, uh, just on placement. So I don't know okay. what their plan is to install those new ones. Um, and now that uh, we've kind of gotten through July, we're going to have a, a we'll schedule a traffic safety advisory committee for the um, for those speed signs that uh, funding was approved at town meeting. Um, I have several quotes um, that I'd like the committee to look at before we uh, make any decisions and move forward. Right. Um, so I know it's it was kind of last minute, but I sent out the email. Uh, regarding the wayward chickens on Pleasant Street. And Tom, you said that you were going to have um, Helen go down and visit the neighbor. Has that happened? Uh, as far as I know, she was going to do it after she got out of work today. She and Sue have been working on that. Um, unfortunately, the neighbor there has had a tough year. Her husband passed away. Um, she had some other issues with her son. So um, it hasn't been an easy time for her. So Helen and Sue have both been working with her. And Helen was going to go back to talk to her again. Because they do have a... Uh, a, a decent sized poop out back. And I think it's just about making sure that they stay in it. Okay. Uh, last time you were here, there was a request for some type of markers on oh, the cemeteries. Yep, so those have been ordered. I don't know when they're gonna be delivered, um, mm -hmm. but I, I had a conversation not long ago with Kevin Pond because through the grapevine, someone told me he still may have some, which he didn't, um, but I've ordered some and I don't know when they're scheduled for delivery. Um, okay. All right, and let's see. So Scott stole my question on the update for the new officer. And so with all the calls that you've been going on, where are you in comparison to this time last year? Higher, lower, same? I didn't pull the whole numbers. Um, I looked at, just the other day, I looked specifically at crashes. Um, and obviously because of COVID, we're much higher in, in crashes, um, but we're similar to numbers of crashes um, from 2019. Um, but I haven't looked at overall numbers. Um, I would guess because of the, the COVID response last year um, that we're, our numbers are up slightly, but I don't know where they compare. I think it would be a fair comparison to compare it to 2019. And I okay. don't know where we stand on that right now, but I can do that for you because um, I'll be back in a couple of weeks and I'll have a better idea of those numbers and I can okay. give you a report on that. All right, so, um, and one last question from me. So with all the calls that your uh, team is going on to help out you know, folks in and around the town, uh, how are you doing in terms of overtime? I know we're a whopping like three weeks into the fiscal budget, but. Um... Yeah, I mean, overtime tends not to be a major concern of ours okay. um, because of our reliance on part-time officers. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a discussion for the future, as, as I mentioned before with police reform and the change in, in the part-time police officer. Um, okay. But I, I think if you, I don't have an exact number, but I think if you look at last year with, with COVID and things, we were well under on our, uh, our wages. Um, but yeah, overtime really hasn't crept up to be a major concern, like I said, because most of our open shifts are filled by part-timers. Okay, cool, appreciate that. Oh, and where are, speaking of that, where are you with that? Um, uh, request for a couple new officers yep. in town? So we, uh, we're still collecting resumes. We're gonna um, continue to take resumes until I think August 13th was the deadline we had set. And then uh, we'll, we'll do some initial reviews and some, uh, some interviews and start to see what's out there for candidates. Um, I think so far I'm looking at a pile on the table across my office, 12 or 13 applicants. Um, and uh, Sergeant Chart and I were actually going through some of them today to look at. Um, some may not be eligible because of what we had talked about with the, uh, the changes in police reform, um, mm -hmm. but there are definitely some, uh, some really good candidates that we have. I know not a lot, but um, some good ones. Good, awesome. Uh, Chris Scott, Margaret, any last questions before we let Chief Galvin go? No, yep. but thank you again, Chief. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Have a good night. Me too. All right. Well, I see uh, 
Fire EMS Chief Ken Clark, who is now coming up to the front. There he is. Hi, Chief. Good evening, everybody. Hello. How are you doing? How are you? Good. I'm doing very well. How's everybody's summer going? Too nice. It's going by too fast. Too fast. Yes. Yeah, too wet, too. <laughs> yeah. I think I smell smoke outside. Hey, stop that. A while. I, I actually got one of my bullets is to talk about that. We're getting a drift yep. from the, uh, the northern Ca the Canadian fires up up north of us. Yeah. So there's like something with the jet stream is bringing it down right onto ground level in New England. And it's, yep. We've seen it in the past, but it's been a while. So it, like we actually had a haze in the back field at the firehouse here today that was like uh, you would think there was a brush fire someplace, but it's like. Uh, when we try, you know, listen to the thing. It's it's coming from Canada, so that's a good yep. thing. Let them deal with it, and we're in good shape here. But uh, uh, what I'd like to start with is our uh, emergency responses for the month of June. We had 82. Okay, and uh, there was one minor structure fire. 23 other related fire type calls. There was 46 EMS responses, which is kind of a uh, a big jump, 10 motor vehicle accidents that we responded to and either transported or there was uh, refusals gained at those and then two public service uh, requests. I know I, I heard the chief talking about some uh, recent events that we were dealing with the hazmat uh, Friday night, uh, our interface with the hazmat team was, uh, was uh, kind of a going home thing for me. I was assigned to that team for over 25 years and we did those things when I was there. I came off that when I went to chief in 09. And so it's like, it was one guy I knew there, but it's like, uh, we did a lot of those around the countryside. And, uh, but the, the technology is even way past what we use then. So it's like, uh, it, it, it's a great, great investment of equipment and manpower at Department of Fire Services. And they came in and actually were able to do sampling and on a table outside the front door, put it into an analysis machine and tell us what was in what was in the house. So uh, within like five to six minutes. So it was interesting to watch it. And it's like, uh, I'd have to get completely retrained if I was gonna go back there because they're, they're, it's really some nice, nice extreme equipment. So it's like, uh, but those, yeah, the other significant is yesterday they did a, uh, for, as a significant incident, excuse me, uh, on the highway, an RV fire, one of those driving RVs, class A's, I think they call it. Uh, there was some uh, operational help from, it was, it was actually geographically in Hudson. We got the initial call for it and we're on scene first. And it was northbound from 290. Uh, two engines went, uh, Hudson went, Marlboro went for uh, additional manpower and water and uh, everything uh, worked really well. And uh, I was happy with the things that went on there. So it's like, uh, and it was like a, just to let you know, on, we, sometimes we talk about the investment of the day sh shift people and the per diems. It was 11, 11 minutes from the time the call was received to they were on scene. All the ground, make the loop at 290 mm. uh, and then come back north. And uh, so that was, they get out quick moved and uh, that's what you want to do. You want to make it like, so it's instinctive and quick and they, and they did really good at it. I was happy with that. The next thing you'll see there is the, uh, the total responses uh, that we got so far and we're running almost equal with last year. I think it's gonna, the way it's going, we had a big jump. When I did this report on July 9th, we had 426 calls. And as of today, we're at 466. So it's like uh, hey, alone you added quite a few. I think there was seven <laughs> or eight today on the day shift alone from 06 to, to uh, eighteen hundred. So it was like some at, on the highway again. The highway is always in the picture, but uh, medicals and some engine calls and uh, did a little T-bone with Chief uh, Galvin and his people out on uh, by Gates Pond Road there, out of, right on sixty two. So it's like uh, yep, interesting day kind of uh, makes the day go by really fast when you, and it gets me a ability to leave the desk and go out in the street, which I, that's my favorite thing. So it's like, uh, no, everything was, yeah, we did have a busy day today. 
the other thing they wanted to like uh, tell you is, is our all hands on deck. All of our career personnel during the day now are, are operational and responding. And uh, during the day, if everyone's in from Monday to Thursday, uh, we have four people immediately going out the door, three in the engine, use the arm of my car, 99 and nine tenths of the time percent. So uh, we get in quick, we get a good recon of incidents and uh, things have been going really good. We, in, in, we've caught some things in the beginning stages, incipient stage, we'll just take care of it and deal with it. But uh, it's all hands on and all those people that you have on your roster are out working on the street. So it's like, it's a good thing. And it's a good thing for the Berlin Fire Department and it's, and it's a good thing for the community of Berlin. So uh, that's working out really good and it's much better than I ever thought it would. So it's like, uh, it's nice to have those kind of surprises sometimes. So that's where we are. A quick update on the new uh, tanker pumper that was ordered a couple of, when I first came here, we uh, the TA was just, I think that was maybe your first contract that you did, I think. That but, was a uh, big one, yeah. We put an order in and, uh, and it was due to the COVID, it was delayed, but it's gonna be at the local dealer sometime this week. We thought maybe today, but we didn't get a call. It was busy enough where we didn't get a chance to check. So I expect to see it there sometime this week. They got like a week plus of, of uh, prepping to do, and then we get it and train. And we'll train and train and train until everyone's comfortable with it, and then we'll put it in service. That will replace two vehicles. It has the uh, pump and the pump associated equipment to replace six engine two. And it also has the uh, water carrying capacity to replace six tanker one. So it's like, uh, and that, and we'll be able to put them out to pasture. One goes back to the state because it's surplus property, and the other one will, I'll uh, work with your TA to come up with a, with a mechanism to get that uh, off our hands and get into where wherever it should go at this time in its in its lifespan. Your, your, your fire department, uh, fire prevention activity report was attached. <clears throat> it's like that was it's been really busy with those and he keeps up on top of that and it's like uh i'm very comfortable with how that whole that whole process flows i get it a lot of 16 years in that same position and it's like uh and i like what i see there so uh on the emergency management update i know i sent you shared with you probably the most exciting piece of paper that you have I've ever seen so it's like uh <laughs> I, I, and I see the smiles and I, and I, and I, I said, oh, they're going to think this is so boring, but it's like, uh, it's something that we need to do as a community and be prepared. So it's like, uh, oh, it's just like, it's like, yep, yeah, it's dry, 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 but it is what it is. You know what I mean? You got to be prepared. So it's like, thank you for receiving that. And it's like, uh, at some point we got to get some signatures on some of the pages that are in there and uh, I'll work with, uh, with the TA to so that we can get that to you guys and get that done. And it's like, uh, it's actually kind of, I think it's an interesting document, but it's like, I'm one of those weird ones like that. So that's tough. So it's like, uh, it is what it is. So it's like uh, the Your regional emergency plan committee is kind of Jake. like quiet because the uh, the MEMA coordinator had twins, him and his wife. So he's been out, but he's back as of last week. So I expect that he's like a driver. He'll, he will have that role in within a couple of weeks. So I'm happy with that. It's like, uh, that's another big thing. It's a shared resource thing. And uh, you still have to have some preparation in, in planning locally, but it's so much easier when you can, can blend in with a Clinton or blend in with a Bolton and get stuff done. And it's like uh, when it might be a little quiet here and we're able to shift our resources another way to be able to help someone out, one of our neighbors, that's always, always good. Another new thing that I haven't done in a while since I think 17, but uh, the school district, uh, and I know Chris knows this dear to heart, reached out to me to uh, help them with to run some tabletop exercises. And uh, I used to do all my schools and I did a lot of marathon ones for years, but uh, the schools, each of the five schools every year, and we would just give them some type of a problem that included a police presence, a fire presence and a school presence, and sometimes even outside. They can get a very elaborate if you want them to. This one's kind of like a, a, a first time one. So it's like, uh, 
it's to see how people react, teach them that it's a learning process. They don't have to be like uh, nervous and and uh, with other people that they might not, like they don't work with me every day or they don't work with somebody else every day. So uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That's Thursday morning. And I know that, that we had some emails on that. I apologize for having to change that, but it's like, uh, uh, there was some nervousness on the side that people had never been involved with one. To me, it's just another tabletop exercise and you just do it. doesn't matter if the whole country's watching. So, but it's like, uh, you just do it. But they, they wanted to kind of like keep it small and keep it in house. I can totally appreciate that. I'm there to help them. That's what they wanted to do. That's what we did. So it's like, uh, and, and they've been really, re Chris, they've been really, really good to deal with up there. So they got a good crew up there. And then there's like a, just a little bit of a, uh, we got to the end of the fiscal year, so you can see what we got in June. We again, we had a busy month. We were able to bill for fifty over fifty three thousand dollars, almost fifty four thousand, and uh, we get credits back for uh, twenty thousand five hundred and some change. And then there's also the yearly totals are there to look at if you're interested in that. You know what I mean? And it's like uh, uh, for FY twenty one from July to June, so it's like those are there. And this month, I really don't have any write-offs like on the EMS. It's like been pretty busy. So we haven't really been able to kind of like stick to the table to do our uh, EMS uh, funding committee meetings due to a lot of different things. So hopefully that's back again next month where I can share that with you and request some, some of those old write-offs that we've been dealing with for a long, long time. That's kind of like in a nutshell, I know I talked a lot there and it's uh, right, but it's any questions that you have, fire them away. And it's like, uh, I'll see what I can answer. How about last? <laughs> you you answered mine, Chief, um, because I was going to have you explain the tabletop exercises. So um, thank you for that. Yeah, I'll actually send it to you so you can look at it. And it's kind of cool. It's really simple. But when you get all the things that you got to do in the timing, it's like, uh, makes people think and makes people look kind of like the crisis response teams kind of come together and say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do so for is that? This, is, this for huge. is this for huge? Is this for staff? School staff? Uh, schools, whatever, whoever that. Whoever they want, whoever crisis wants. Response, to yeah, whoever they have on that team. Okay. Again, I haven't learned all the faces and names yet. You know what I mean? I'm like yeah. the new guy. So I don't know. I, uh, I think Tim Wheel or somebody told me I can't say that much longer. So it's like, uh, <laughs> but it's like, I'm still learning all the names. So it's like, uh, uh, did you meet the, did you meet the uh, fire chief from Boylston too? I've known him for like 20 years. Oh, okay. Good. Bobby, Bobby, Joe, Joe and I have known each yeah. other for a long time. Of good. all the chiefs up here, probably the only one I know, probably a, maybe a, not as long, but a little, but more recent doing with some of the stuff in district 14 was chief Legendre over in Bolton. And, uh, but it is what it is. So it's like, uh, yeah, you, you get, know them all a little bit. You have to, because you, when you get to work, you gotta like, can't not know what someone's like or what they're not gonna do. So it's like, uh, I, I enjoy good people up this way. Well, like, thank uh, you. Thank you got some questions. Nope, I, I'm good. All thank right, you, Chief, you ready? <laughs> oh, I'm always ready for you, Peg. All right, so um have you thought about or is it somewhere in your planning to offer cpr and or first aid training for the folks yep. in town i was talking with the lead cpr instructor it's just that we're just getting ready to kick it off because of the covid stuff we're able to go back yeah. to it this and again we haven't it's we've talked about it it's on paper we just haven't pulled the trigger to set the dates that's okay. all we need to do and i'm a huge uh I think the community should be involved in this. I've done a lot, of, got a lot of people involved in it and that in the first aid and you will see that soon. Hopefully you're in, a, you're in that class. Oh, absolutely. I can yeah. straw, I can, I can like close line the best and like move to the part <laughs> of the line. Um, let's see. Uh, so, and this is something that you don't need to answer tonight. You can take away and ponder. So the city of Marlboro, they're looking at doing a uh, parade in Labor Day? On Labor Day. Uh, I know a couple of years ago, I rode with Sharon and I think Lieutenant Polino, we did a nice little parade in that ball and I get to wave out the window at kids. Um, is there any thought to Berlin participating in that? Well, usually when they have that, they send out an invitation. 
yep. and it would come to me as the fire chief of because uh, I know that for years, I, I actually, that was one of the ones I took my boys, that was the only one I took my boys to. Aww. And it's like, uh, and I'd bring them with, kind of pack them in the truck, put the oldest one near the door on the other side so no one could get out. And it's like, and we went. <laughs> so it's like, uh, we did that for years, but I haven't seen an invite this year. And I know they didn't do it last year because of the COVID, right. but I think it's like you said, Labor Day. Yeah, I know yeah. that uh, Chris and, and Scott and I got an invite. So if you just want to hand over the keys to one of the trucks. Oh, yeah, just come <laughs> down and help yourself. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, make sure we'll put, you cut the corners wide. All right, we'll put Margaret in the back in the bucket truck and, and she yep. can- uh, she Up can in the bucket. Away. Up in the bucket. So no, I, honestly, if it's something that, um, you know, the town is going to do, you know, whether or not, you know, let me know. I'm I'm game for a, a sit in a wave through okay. Marlboro. Yeah, okay. no, that's like, uh, I haven't been to one of those in a long time. Maybe yeah. I'll drive some. Okay. Oh, God. I want to be in the truck. Okay. Um, Any of the old vehicles working? <laughs> or, or if they break down, can we leave them? <laughs> What's that? I said, or if yeah. we, we take any of the old vehicles and they break down, can we just leave oh, them? Yeah, the old ones, we haven't had much. I haven't had much of them. I've seen them. But it's like uh, the 41, I have some experience with one like that. But the older one, I don't at all. Okay. So. I mean, I asked uh, Chief Galvin, I'll ask you the same question, you know, three whopping weeks into the fiscal year, you guys are, see, are super, super busy. Um, you know, how's your OT budget going? It's going really well. It's like, uh, it's the, the thing that's, that, that, that you don't have control of. My overtime is only when there's incident responses or training. Uh -huh. Training is a given. So we know, I know what that is. I can tell you, if I went into my budget, I could tell you what it is for each guy. Yep. Uh, and but it, it the unknown is the incident responses and they, as they get busier, yeah. those are the guys I want to have back as my career personnel because they have the most experience have had have a higher level of training than most of the, the uh, higher level of training, and it's like and that's kind of like your A team that you want back at your side when you're dealing with something on the street. So it's like uh, yeah, and it, it's. Sometimes they're available for them and sometimes they're busy with families and can't go to something, but it's like, you know, I watch it very closely. It's like, yeah, uh, yeah I, I look at it. I bet you if I don't look at it, what is a week? I don't look at, you know, I'll go and say, oh, how are we going to do with this? And not so much now, but like when you get into like October, November, you look at it like, oh, how am I looking in the first half or quarter? You know what I mean? Sometimes, but it's like, yeah. uh, no, it's always something. I, and, and I update it. I have a spreadsheet. I track it weekly off the payroll. So it's like put it in there. I look. I looked at it all this morning, and it's like we've had two of our. I think we're on our four, like a three and a half weeks now, and two of the weeks we never even had any overtime. So it's like uh, that's a good thing. But it's mm -hmm. like we're all in like Friday night. I don't think any of my career personnel were there, but we had a six-hour night at that uh, call on Gates Pond yeah. Road. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like. It's ka-chink, ka-chink. They need a run, you know what I mean, for everybody. And uh, But you need those people there to get the job done and do what you have to do so it's safe and, and it's operationally sound. Mm -hmm. So uh, just, I had an old chief that always told me, Ken, it's just the cost of doing business. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like. A... No, okay. All right. That Good was. Question. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely. No, that was it. And honestly, you know, think about it, ponder if you get an invite from Marlboro, um, you know, I'm game. I'll call the chief up and ask him. There you go. Tell yeah, him that the uh, an email yeah. tomorrow. Hey, what the heck? I haven't seen anything. It's That's like, right. That, uh, your select board has the invite, but uh, and they're they're going to come commandeer a truck. So uh, yep. yeah, <laughs> in the yeah, in we'll... the public's best interest, you don't want any of us driving. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll be a designated driver that day. Okay. I can drive. So. All right. All right. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. Any other questions for uh, for chief? No, thank you very oh, much. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you very much, Chief. Good night, Stay safe care. out there, Chief. Have a good one. All right. Take care, TA. All right. All right. So this is oh, I forgot to ask about Ava. Next month. Okay. Uh Margaret, I know that you're just back and unpiling, but any updates? I have four, I have four quick things. Okay. Um, the first is uh you had the presentations by RCAP Solutions and DEP at your July 12th meeting. Um, and before I, before I left on the 16th, I left the Board of Health hard copies of RCAP's um, flyer 
to post around town and I see that they've oh. done that. So thank you very much to the Board of Health for, for doing that, uh, posting hard copies of it. Um, any residents who are interested in participating in that well testing program should contact Lily Daigle at RCAP Solutions at 508-221-7303. And that well testing program is, um, is supposed to be effective in uh, September and October. So that's when they'll be doing the work. Um, is... After the presentation, I spoke with Mary Jo Kigley of DEP, and uh, she uh, thought that in the interest of avoiding any confusion between the well testing programs, she would wait to roll out information on DEPs until mid-August. So we'll have a little bit of lag there uh, so people can um, kind of differentiate between the two programs. So I'm going to connect with her in mid-August, um, and she's going to give me the printed information to put out as a notice. Is this up on our website too? Our cap, yes, this okay. is, this flyer is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, procurement, uh, we are locking in uh, heating oil rates. We were actually lucky to receive a quote because in a market like this, uh, oil companies are very hesitant to lock in any prices. So um, we saw quotes from three area providers and Northboro Oil is the only one that has provided um, us a quote um, and that's $2.399 uh, per gallon for the coming heating season. Uh, now that last, that's a dollar over, over the FY21 uh, rate, but that was an unprecedented time where there really wasn't much commuting going on back in May of last year, May and June of last year. So um, the year before the rate was 2.399 and the year before that it was 2.499. So we've stayed pretty steady um, other than last year. So we're going to lock in at this rate to assure that the uh, to assure that we have a steady uh, rate for this fiscal year. Uh, the mobile food vendor policy and procedures um, that was circulated last week for comments from various uh, local official stakeholders. And um, we've created a subfolder in the August 9th agenda packet that will contain all the feedback that we've received. And I know Peg has provided comments on, on it and uh, those are in there as well. And then the last thing I have is that I talked with, um, you have Allison Sorosi in the audience. She's from NRP, um, the group that is selling the Rockwell apartments. So she'll be talking to the board in a little bit. But after I spoke with her the first time, um, I had a, a Zoom meeting with our affordable housing consultants. So we didn't only talk about this uh, particular sale um, that includes a, uh, several <laughs> affordable units, uh, but we included, we um, talked about kind of the kickoff of our participation in the consortium um, intermunicipal agreement. Um, so they are ready and willing to help us. I've got a pile of paperwork. I need to forward them uh, tomorrow. And they're going to start doing research at the Registry of Deeds and creating files for all of our units. So they are there to help us. And it's, um, it feels pretty good that we have them available <laughs> as a resource. So those are the only four things I have um, today. Scott or Chris, any uh, follow-up questions? Nope. Not at the moment. All right. Uh, so we'll move down to old business. So first up on the docket is the uh, discussion on highway superintendent facilities director position. Um, do you want me to just, I, I did put something yeah. in the board's agenda packet for tonight to look at. Um, so you could see the status, um, the members of the preliminary interview panel and, um, and substitute uh, personnel committee member uh, met on Tuesday, July 13th to, to discuss next steps um, in the process given the withdrawal of the candidate the board had interviewed. Um, the group uh, decided let's get it posted for a two week period this time and see if we get any bites and I can tell you at this moment, we have not received a single resume. Um, in addition to the ones that we had previously received. Uh, currently. Um, to operate the highway department, what we've done is we have assigned um, both uh, Jim Spinney and Fred Cummings to kind of uh, co-foreman positions uh, leading the department. Jim is uh, taking 
uh, is very much taking a lead role there um, at the moment. Um, and he was over at the 1870 town hall dealing with building issues today. <laughs> so, um, so that's how we're, we're um, kind of patching this um, or, or plugging this, this gap um, in highway superintendent um, leadership in the department. Um, what's going to happen after this, I think I emailed the board, um, is that the deadline to submit resumes this round is this Friday at 4.30 p.m. And early next week, I plan on scheduling a meeting again of the, um, of the panel uh, to discuss next steps and, um, and what we intend to do to bring uh, qualified candidates forward to the, to the select board for consideration. That's where we're at. Okay. And I can tell you, I had to uh, stop in down the barn to ask um, Jim and Fred another question and just said, well, I was there, how are things going? And they said that they were, they were fine. Um, things were getting done. The two newer members, they're uh, busily getting their certifications and licenses. One was halfway on something and had another appointment. So um, that would be the CDL permit, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I knew you that you'd <laughs> the learner's me permit. <laughs> yeah, learner's permit. You know, that thing so we can drive a truck. Um, I did not offer to drive a truck. Fred probably mm -hmm. would have tossed me the keys and said, go try. But uh, they seem to be doing okay. So I figured while I was there, I would just take advantage and give them a, hey, how you doing? And got a, um, a thumbs up from the uh, two of them that I spoke with. So I was very happy to hear and just wanted to remind them that, uh, you know, any of us are here for them. So if they have any questions, concern, the four of us are available. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should note that I should note that their capacity is very, very limited at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, and so any extra um, projects right. um, could right. take some time. Mm -hmm. And they know that. And they had also asked, and, and uh, I forgot this, they had asked if any of us hear of anything if we could keep like a running list somewhere. So in the event <laughs> that things slow down for them and there's something that they could, you know, take and plug away with that might take them an hour to do, you know, to let them know they don't, you know, they want to let the folks in the town know that they're there for them as well and they'll do what they can. So if we want to keep like a running list, if people yeah, pop up somewhere. Yeah. yeah, that's that's something that should go. That's something that should go through our office yeah. here. So yep. um, I think we do have kind of a backlog yeah. um, of, yep. of things um, mm -hmm. and they will get to them. I, they're oh God, yeah. very committed to. All right. Uh, so next up, uh, Margaret, I know that you had shared uh, some info. Oh, sorry, for, Scott. For the highway department, how are we doing in hiring the seasonal position? That is advertised, but I don't know that we have any, uh, Mary would have to advise. I haven't checked with her today on whether or not she's received any correspondence at all. You know. One person pulled an application, but has not returned it yet. Okay. Is there... We are accepting only Town of Berlin employment applications, very easily available on our website and uh, with the posting. So that position's up. I know that Dave was working with uh... Oh God, what school? Bay State Roads. Yeah, I mean, is there any possibility that we could do that, that maybe we could tap Asabed or Tohonto or <coughs> any of the boat schools around us? Um, we could share the notice with them. Yeah. Maybe they'd have a yeah. job board. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. All right. All righty, so moving down the list. Uh, update on the information for Stephen Venacasa and the homes at Highland Ridge. In the earthwork yeah. permit. Mm -hmm. All right. So this hearing occurred on July 12th as well. So a lot of things happened on July 12th. On July 16th, I sent a reminder. There was some back and forth um, regarding the uh, performance bond. And um, on July 16th, I sent an email to Brian Clark, who's listed as the applicant for homes at Highland Ridge um, on the earthwork permit. Um, of the three items the board has uh, has requested and not yet received. The first is the performance bond, and that is in the form of a surety certificate, not a cash bond, and not, yeah, not a cash surety. Um, the next is the estimated number of trucks, the amount of earth material already imported to the project. And the third is estimated number of loads of earth material still to be imported. There was no response last week 
So today I emailed uh, Brian again and reminded him that this documentation is required prior to the select board's release of the earthwork, per or earthwork permit and prior to commencing any earth material importation activity not previously authorized by the earthwork advisory committee to um, Russo Brothers trucks only. Um, and I've not received a, I have not received a response, a reply on that yet. So um, I'm, I'll give it a few days and my recommendation to the board, if there is no reply, um, is to invite Mr. Clark to come to the board's next meeting on August 9th and explain where they're at. Meanwhile, we have to find a way to make the um, conditions uh, known to the applicant, um, the conditions that the board imposed, and there was a list of those. Um, so I'll work with Mary on that to get them the list of conditions, but but be clear, the permit is not released yet. So. Um, so Margaret, on that, I know one of the conditions was speed, and there was an email that had come from, from the resident, whoa, blah, 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 blah. Yes. One of the residents in town regarding speeds up and down the hill. So uh, blinky sign, police presence. Yeah, so we're going to bring, I'm, I'm asking uh, Fred and uh, Jim to drop off the message board over at Highland. They have been trying to advertise for a seasonal laborer position. <laughs> we set it up just to test it and is not having great success. But I'll have them move it over to near the, tra the railroad tracks on, um, on Highland. Um, in that area to make sure it's clear. And I know that Chief Galvin is also having his officers um, go out there to kind of do spot patrols. Okay. But yes, that's important. And I, I, want to, I want to acknowledge that the board has gotten more correspondence on the speed of trucks right. going up and down Highland. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there are other trucks that are also using Highland, um, you know, Maplewood comes to mind to like Lincoln. So, um, I mean, they're obviously not aware of the 15 miles an hour up and down the hill. So, yeah. So okay. we'll put the message board out there, uh, trucks 15 miles an hour. Okay. All right. Um, so the earthworks permit, we reviewed the draft, correct? On that, we're good. That's it. Okay. That's where we're at. I'll keep the board yep. posted if I get any replies. I hope I do. Yeah, I do too. Um, question for you on that before we go any further. In the email, I thought they said Russo trucks were already were involved in that zipping up and down the hill. Um, is there any way that we can reach out to um, the owner and talk to him about that and share concerns? Yes. Um, okay. I can do that. I don't know if I have his contact, but I know someone who does. Yeah, me too. So let me know. Uh, <laughs> up, we have a, a member There's of the audience. Someone who knows go. someone who does. Hi, and, uh, I know that already has been done. Um, and I, I can only speak to them coming up and down Linden. And honestly, they were going so slow I don't know how they were moving. And those were the Russo trucks. I caught them coming up the hill and down the hill. And honestly, they, they were going, I don't even think they were going 15 miles an hour. So I know the message got to, to them. Um, I don't know about any other trucks in town. Okay. I know somebody had spoken to Andy. Yeah. And like I said, I, I did have the luxury of personally <laughs> monitoring it, so. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Janet. All right. So moving down next up on the agenda is the town administrator annual evaluation process. Margaret, I know that you had passed around a document uh, before you went out and went on vacation. Um, I know I sent something back. Not sure if Scott and Chris had have sent it back as well. I think I only have gotten, I've only received comments from one. I mean, I'm happy to, if, if you would like more time to review, to review these, that's fine with me. Um, Again, the only question I had was the timing of goals and objectives. Yes. Okay. And then the other document is the select board agenda procedures. So do you want to move it to our next meeting, which is the ninth to five, is it the ninth? Yeah, that's our next meeting. Yeah, August 9th. 
um, to finalize those documents. I thought the select board agenda procedures looked fine. Um, is that is the um, annual evaluation process? Is that the one I drafted, Margaret? Yes. So, All right. And that was the discussion at the board's last meeting was April versus June or April versus I can't remember. It was I think it was June, if I'm not mistaken. It was after election versus before election. For the goals. For the goals and objectives. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, there's pluses and minuses probably to both. I don't have, well, as the person being evaluated, I guess, I don't have a problem with moving the timing to June. However, if it was moved later, you're trying to set goals and objectives for the coming fiscal year, it'd be nice to know those before the start of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So I think as long as it happens by June, I think that the timing would be okay, in, in my opinion. I mean, I liked June because in theory, there could be a new select board member at that point or yeah. And and at that point, having that person having some say in what's coming on in the coming year seems to make sense. But as opposed to an outgoing per person setting goals and objectives and then someone gets elected into a spot and is sort of stuck helping to implement things that, that they might not have run in a campaign on or things they might have run opposing because they were yeah. sort of already set goals. So the performance evaluation, though, um, uh, a uh, new board member would not be able to evaluate the time. Right, which, which is why I like so the maybe. timing of the performance evaluation. It's the goals and objective setting. So it's the only part that I would, yes, right. Okay. But, but that new person would be on board if it was done in May. It just might be right off the bat when they first are getting on, on the board, right? And in the middle of prepare, I mean, you have town meeting and the follow-ups of that. I, I, Yes, I, I just I'd like it, and maybe you don't. Maybe you don't say a month after the election of a after elections would yeah, probably be a fine way of saying it. Yeah, that's actually okay. And maybe you say after elections and before the start of the fiscal year, so that gives us a window uh, and reminds us that we really want it done by the beginning of the year because if it's fiscal year goals, right, we should yeah, have it done before the beginning of the year. As soon after the election as possible, before the beginning of the next fiscal year, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would okay. work fine by me. Okay, so that's the last sentence in the entire draft. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it would read the members will address goals and objectives for the town administrator for the following year as soon after the town election as possible and before the start of the next fiscal year. Yep. Perfect. My, my preferred language sometimes is as soon as after the election is practical as opposed to possible, but that's fine. But that, that that's just a <laughs> peeve of mine yeah. generically, not on this yeah. particular document. You never know when it's possible or not possible. <laughs> Right. Well, or when it's possible, it's right? possible the very first meeting after is technically possible, it might not be practical because of other things on the agenda. Okay. So, and prior yep. to the start of the next fiscal year. Okay. So, Margaret, do you want to, um, uh, we'll put those together and then have them up for final vote and approval, less deliberation in August? Absolutely. Give you enough time? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's fine All with me. All right. Uh, moving down to the one day all alcohol liquor sales license services for the Father Q Golf Committee doing business as the Crystal Club Charity Open. That was a lot. All right. Uh, for August 14th, 8 a.m. to 6, and there's no rain date. Motion to approve. Second. All right, uh, so we'll take a vote. Uh, Stone Eye. Hawkins Eye. Keith Eye. All right, there you go. Thank you so much. Uh, next up is the temporary conservation agent job description and funding approval. Oh, wait a minute, Mary has a hand up. Hi, Mary. Sorry. The um, fire marshal is just waiting for a permit for the Father Q event, but that's, oh. so I'd just say that probably be the only condition that there's left to satisfy before release. Okay, so in it's case they're watching tonight. All right, so yes. it's contingent. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate you. Okay. Uh, so back to the conservation agent job description and funding approval, Margaret. I know that you've uh, been working with personnel closely on this to pull the job description and um, conservation approved a uh, set amount of money to come out of their open space fund for it. Or wetlands and or wetlands. Yep. Plain. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
All right, so you've got the draft conservation agent, temporary conservation agent job description before you. Now, Chris, you mentioned that you have a few. Um, I must have had um, a previous draft or something. Oh, okay. So I think the one that I looked at later this afternoon um, looked fine. Okay, all right, good. Um, so this is the draft before you tonight. Personnel Committee did approve this on July 14th. They did remove... Um, they did remove some sections that included basic administrative Admin. functions like taking minutes and things um, in order for the position to focus on the highest priority yeah. technical aspects of the job. So, um, all right. so there's that. As far as funding goes, the Conservation Commission, Commission voted on July 7th to allow um, they voted unanimously to allow wetlands funds and open space funds to be used to pay for the temporary position. They're looking at approximately eight hours a week. Um, Sue might be able to weigh in on this. It was kind of a, a crazy night, but I thought that the rate was approximately in the $23 to $25 range. I think that's what we had discussed, but I'm oh. not sure. Sue, are you there? I'm not Is sure you? the rate was set. I wonder if she's in the barn cleaning. Well, <laughs> the personnel committee still this isn't has working. To, still oh. has to, <laughs> yeah, the I'm personnel sick. committee still uh, has to address the job ad on mute. Um, at which time, oh. at which time a, a pay rate would be okay. identified. Um, now, wetlands protection fees. So. Um, DOR regulations require that any use of the Wetlands Protection Fund uh, be um, directly related to wetlands work. So this person is going to have a, a significant portion of their job dedicated to wetlands protection work. That Those portions of the job um, would be able to be paid from the Wetlands Protection Fund. The Open Space Fund doesn't have those... Um, those same requirements. Um, so there aren't the restrictions that, um, that, are, that are apply with the Wetlands Protection Fund. So as far as approving uh, funding for the position, I would recommend that the select board um, approve the use of wetlands protection fees. Um, right now the balance is $11,695.47 approve the use of wetlands protection fees only for the portions of the, um, of the job that are directly related to wetlands and use open space funds with a current balance of $236,881.59 for any other portions of the job. Total expenditure not to exceed $11,000. So this position would be through the end of the fiscal year? End of the fiscal year. Yep. And then how are we, uh, who's responsible for tracking the, how much is wetlands protection versus open spaces? That has to, that's gonna to have to be the conservation commission because they are gonna be signing off on uh, payrolls. And I'll, I'll also be tracking it administratively here as well. And I know um, I was at the conservation meeting where they were talking about this and they were concerned, uh, how do I find somebody that only wants eight hours a week to which I had said I had gone through the, uh, was it the MMA uh, website, Margaret, that you had shared with me. Yeah. And there are multiple towns uh, around us that have conservation, that are looking for conservation agents out there, uh, you know, like around 30 hours. So my suggestion to them was, um, you know, maybe, uh, we re, you know we keep a list of those towns. We reach out to those towns. Uh, maybe you know Sally applicant wants to work thirty hours a week for insert town here and is okay to pick up eight hours in Berlin. So uh, you know they seemed comfortable with that that we may be able to uh, you know use another town. I reached out to my colleagues across the state and uh, actually, no, I shouldn't say across the state. It was really only in this region because that's the only practical place to look. Um, but I did find at least from one town that there might be a possible eight hour block of time where okay. a conservation agent could give us. All right, awesome. Well, we'll keep that posted uh, or keep that on the, on the docket for next steps. All right. Um, 
Moving down to the change of local and local. Lo did you want to vote uh, the job? Did you want to yeah. vote the job description? Yes, please. I, 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 I move the job description and the funding. <laughs> okay. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second, and uh, questions have been asked and answered. We'll put it to a vote. Stone aye. Hawkins aye. Keith aye. There you go. Approval on job description and funding. Thank you. And Mary, um, June is going to need a, a June and Concom will need a copy of these minutes. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. And thank you, Margaret, for uh, working with them to get this pushed along. Uh, all right. So now up next is the change of local, <laughs> local liquor license manager at Qdoba. <laughs> It's not easy reading this stuff. Okay. okay. So my understanding is that they've met all the requirements um, and all the reviews have come in okay. Um, the quarry has been done. No one, no local reviewers have expressed concerns on this application. I, I do want to note, however, that we need to work on our um, local licensing guidelines for businesses and, and broadly share them and make sure that our license holders have received them because we've run into a couple of instances, um, you know, in the recent past where a business might be doing something already before requesting permission. And, and we just don't want to fall into that. So um, I think I do have a template on that with, with protocols that license holders need to follow. And I think we need to we need to be uh, working on that. So we'll get that to you. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you need any type of um, motion or vote on this? Uh, on, on, on this particular one, uh, is this including their changing of hours or is that going to be a separate vote? No, this is this would include both. Okay. I'm fine with both. I just wanted to be clear if we're just changing the manager. So we're, the hour changes is just adding an hour on Friday and Saturday nights. Correct. And it doesn't do anything to their alcohol or it does? And Chief Galvin's on board with that? That, okay. that is their alcohol. Those, right. That is their alcohol hours. And Chief, I think Chief, Chief said was that he was okay. It. They have no okay. history with the police department. And 110 Grill has the same 11 o'clock hour closing time on Friday and Saturday nights. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Any other questions? No. Did we move right. that? I, I've already lost track. Uh, nope. No. There you Both go. Approve. I second. How's that? All right. Awesome. We'll get. We'll figure this thing out. It's been too long. Uh, all right. Motion a second. Questions answered. Up for vote. Stone eye. Uh, Hawkins eye. Keith eye. There you go. Thank you I'm so sorry much. looking ahead on the agenda. I know. Stop looking ahead. Oh, it's the assessors. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm. The assessors are visiting. I'm just saying. Come on. Tell them all we said hi. All right. The board so, says hi. <laughs> <laughs> they wait. So, there you go. Yeah, give them a wave back. All right. So uh, next up is to discuss a possible fall 2021 special town meeting. Oh. Okay. So looks look like quite a list there, huh? Yeah. Is, it's <laughs> quite a list. It is quite the list, but I don't know how many of those are really like ready. There, there. Well, some of them are theories, like things we'd like to be doing to bylaws uh and policies mm -hmm. or bylaws um but i don't know how many of them are ready and don't we if even if we they're ready today shouldn't we doing some public education and announcements to get folks on board i think the key verbiage there was if they are ready today <laughs> right which they're not right none of them are ready to none of them are ready today um but yeah, and yes, we should be getting we should be getting information out to the public uh, when they are in um, in draft form. So so just so the public knows what we're talking about here, um, bylaws that are listed as possible special town meeting articles would be uh, combined earth importation and like kind soil bylaw or elimination of one amendment of one. Um, and I think the Earthwork Committee was um, um, was asked to to discuss that. Mm -hmm and review it. Um, a draft had already been, pre been prepared by our town council. The next was the town meetings um, uh, and town reports bylaw, um, amendments to that. And then also personnel policies and procedures bylaw, 
uh, amendments to that. And um, the Historical Commission had discussed the demolition delay bylaw and removal of obsolete revolving funds, which could be done at any, you know, at any upcoming town meeting. So those are so, the bylaws that are. Relevant. So if something comes up that we need to really address um, by the fall, mm -hmm. then we can talk about whether we want all of these things on mm -hmm. there. One of the things um, that it, again is still being discussed, but it is memorialized in a development agreement is the river run parcel and the town has an option to purchase um, a portion of that river run parcel, the decision has to be made by December 11th. And that would have to go to town meeting because it's um, it's acquisition of real estate. So I right. believe that that would have to go to town meeting um, before that date. And I, I, you know, I wasn't clear on that, whether it would expire or I guess it would expire, wouldn't it? We would no longer have the option to purchase under that. Okay, okay, yes, yeah, so. I mean, there are things like that, that maybe that would be the reasons why we'd have a special town meeting yeah. and then well, tag on a few other things. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're definitely going to tag on the CPA projects. I mean, I really would like to see those getting going for either historical mm -hmm. or what was it cultural and rec. And I can't remember the third one. Um, historical. Thank you. So mm -hmm. yeah. affordable housing. Yeah, you know what would would kind of like we have the money and there's needs all over the place. So really would kind of like that. But I don't know where the CPA committee is, uh, if they've met, if they've got word out, et cetera. Well, they expect uh, the chair, Tim uh, Wheeler, had expressed an interest um, not too long ago about the Community Preservation Commission uh, possibly bring, uh, bringing a few of the lower hanging fruit um, project requests to town meeting. But again, they need to first uh, mm -hmm. finalize their vetting process, the applications, they need to hold a hearing. And I, I don't have an update from him as to when all those are scheduled. Okay. So, anyway, so, my, my recommendation here to the board was uh, town meeting not held any, any earlier than Monday, October 18th, prefer, preferably before November 8th. But um, you know, if there's gonna be funding required from free cash, we have to wait till the free cash is certified. So then obviously this is an indoor meeting. Uh, it indoor just might or? be, yeah. Okay. Uh, when do we expect free cash to be certified? So free cash is generally certified. Um, here it's in Burlington, it's usually early, earlier than I'm used to. I think last year, I wanna say beginning of October, end of October. No, oh, Miss Poland is in the audience. So we could yeah. ask the gal who knows. We don't have the... Uh, Free cash certification sheet from last year, but no. Well, but even if we just go ahead, Jen. It will all depend on when I can get the books all closed and when I can get all the information back from people. Right, but is is end of September, early October, just a reg regularly a reasonable time frame? Yes, I'd like okay. to get it done earlier because I used to try to do it by the end of August, but September, October is what it's been running because. Um, a lot of the departments aren't getting me back the stuff that needs to be back in time to close. And, and then the certification of free cash is done by you or something we have to send to the state and wait for them to approve? That's DLS. This, yep, the DLS has to approve it, but they've added on a ton of information now that has to be sent in before they will certify it. Um, so it's a process. And if they're in the middle of doing recap sheets, which is normally their first priorities, unless we have a special town meeting scheduled um, they don't rush it for free cash. So then do we book it tentatively? Uh, this is where I'm trying to think of is I'm trying to think of the timelines of, uh, of how to, how to pull the pieces together because we have the, uh, CPA committee that's going to need to come up with rules and ask for projects and get projects and approve projects before we can finalize the warrant. And we have to have certified cash to know how we're funding things before we certify the warrant. And after we certify the warrant, we still then have to publicize it and get it out to all the citizens. And we have to do that at least two weeks prior to a meeting. Although I've always pushed saying that really, because sometimes that piece of paper seems to show up like three days before the meeting, which I don't find palatable. Um, and so even if we did a November meeting, that means that November 8th meeting, that means that really by the first week of October, we have to have a finalized warrant put together. 
And that means we're probably talking about a gen, I mean, th that's a finalized audit warrant. So we're opening the warrants potentially what, the 1st of September and closing at the end of September? Can, can all the pieces be put together by then? I, I don't think you, I don't think you'd have to do it that early. Um, the question is, can all the pieces be put together? So that's a question for the Community Preservation Committee um, and the other uh, public bodies that are reviewing and recommending bylaw amendments. So what, what would be, if we wanted a November 8th meeting, what is our timeline to open and close warrants and have everything finalized so it can be mailed to people? I'll have to do a calendar, that, Scott. Right. I'll, I'll do another calendar for you like I did for the annual town meeting. Okay, and that way you'll have it, you can, you can see, um, you know, what the, what the rollout would be. All right. Um, do you think by next meeting you'd be able to get us a calendar oh, or gosh, towards yes. the end of August? All right. Yeah, so that's, that's something that I can whip up really fast. I just didn't. Right. Know All right. So what we, you and I can remember to, to plop that on the um, agenda for two weeks from now. Yeah. So, so do if the calendar, assume a meeting of November 8th. And yep. we can make adjustments on it because as a draft calendar, we can move things forward and sure. back as we see fit. But yep. I'm nervous that even November 8th is hard to pull off at this point in time. Okay. Um, and, and meanwhile, I will check in with the other, um, the other local authorities on pieces that they may want to submit and ask if they, if they might be ready. All right. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Jim. Yep. All right. Um, so Allison, thank you so much for being patient with us. Um, talk about the sale of the Rock Well apartments and uh, talk about the uh, agreement notice requirements and um, uh, other items. So Allison, welcome. Uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you. And thanks for having me. Um, sorry, I think I dropped off this really quick. But um, so yeah, I guess if you wanted an overview of NRP. Really yes, quick. please. That would be great. Yeah, so um, we are headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio, and we um, develop, construct, and then manage both affordable housing and market rate properties. Um, we are based basically from Texas over east, and um, I think as of right now, we have just a few properties in the greater Massachusetts area, and the Rockwell is one of them. So this, this specific one has... Um, 21 affordable units, and I think there are 84 units that are part of the regulatory agreement. And on this one, typically what we do as like a developer and constructor, we will lease these um, complexes up to say a certain percentage lease percent, and then we end up selling them as a lot of our business is on that front end of things. So um, I think just the DHCD notice came up um, in regards to this one, and we have a we have a buyer selected. They had a um, little bit of a quicker closing period, I think, that allowed us to kind of move forward faster than say what this 30 day notice would be. Um, so I guess what we were doing is just requesting if the um, notice could be shortened um, versus being the full 30 days. So. Um, I have a question for Mary. Um, Mary, on what day last week did we receive the notice? I just want to know how much time we have in already um, since the notice was received by us. And I and I apologize. The notice, the header on the uh, on the notice was from what agency or organization? Was it from your, your law firm? Yeah. So it was our. Um... It was the council that we've engaged. It's Golston Stores in, um, in Massachusetts. They're the external council that we engaged in regards to this sale. So, All right, Mary, did we receive that last week? Um, it was dated It was dated July 15th, and it was supposed to have been sent um, overnight, correct? Yeah. Uh, Allison, is that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I just, it, it's... It may not be a, you know, it may not be a major, uh, a major issue. I just wanted to know when we received it to know how much time has already, has already lapsed from the, from the time of the show. Of the it show. wasn't an attachment, right? It was just within the body of an email? No, no, no. It was, no, no, a, it the, was actually a FedEx. Yeah. It was a fax? There's two. FedEx. It was a, it was an overnight package from Federal Express. 
There's two attachments in an email uh, dated Friday, July 16th at 2.05. One attachment is recorded a, re a recorded amendment to regulatory and the recorded regulatory that, agreement. That's not the notice though. Um, no. Well, the notice came from the lawyer. It's one of those attachments, but I, I believe Allison says it was also overnighted to us. Yeah, that should have been the case from from this individual, um, Deborah Horwitz from. Oh, here it is. It was forwarded by Eloise. Uh, it's like everyone's going through their emails to try and. I know. Well, no, I, I have it in front of me, but we're looking at the date the 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 fee, piece of physical paper arrived at town offices. Which will not be part of an email, will it? Well, I'm not. I'm not physically in the office right now. Let me see if I can look through my. But it implies that we would have gotten on the 16th, so we would be 10 days in at this point. Right. And on the 16th, we received at least unofficial notice via emails. Yes. So. Here's the 17th. That makes it nine days. Sorry. What is that, Mary? We didn't put this in the drive for tonight. No, I didn't because I just, Allison just sent them to me again because I was, I was operating under the assumption that it was the email I, from July 16th that was the notice. I, I'm pulling it up from the drive. It's, it's dated July 15th, oh, right, I did, but I did, it's I did, not I showing, we, I, that's not the copy I scanned that would have the FedEx. Let me see if I can just right. pop right. and that's stop. Right. Give me a second. We're, okay. Again, I don't know if this is right. a major issue because we did receive at least informal notice via the email on, on the 16th, right. which would mean that we're 10 days in already. Right. And then the request is just a sort of one-time exemption. This is not, because I read the, the amendment, is you're not asking for a permanent re, uh, re, reducing of this time period, just for this one sale. No, yeah, just for this one sale. And it's it's solely based off of the closing period that the, the buyer was able to agree to. Um, mm -hmm. But in regards to, like there are just, is no amendment going on or anything like that. Um, right. All of these units will stay affordable and they are assuming the regulatory agreement as it is stated, um, it was mm -hmm. just a just a, a basis of the sale is that we wanted to make sure that we were either following this 30 day notice or if we were able to move forward with approval um, on both year end and DD, DHCD's end, um, we were going to try to do that, so. Um, and I did, um, after I spoke with Allison earlier today, I think I mentioned this earlier, um, I, I did consult with our our affordable housing mm -hmm. consultants and Jennifer Van Campen of Metro West um, replied and said um, she had wanted to be sure that the uh, 21 units are properly occupied. I sent her the list that we had. She said it looks good and all she needed to do was um, double check with the property manager on utility allowances. Um, so, but she said it looked, she said it looked good. So as a note, um, Elizabeth was the property manager and she recently left. So I can provide um, the contact to Alex. He's Alex Stathos is the regional manager who's filling in in the meantime, um, basically through sale. So okay. if, if you need a different point of contact, he would be, be the guy. Okay. Yeah, I only had Elizabeth's. That's the one. July oh. right. 16th. Okay, yep. great. That's excellent. That was unnecessarily painful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm happy to provide any other information. The buyer is LaSalle, which is basically um, an entity under Jones Ling LaSalle, um, JLL, and the new property manager would be Lincoln. So um, they're both pretty large, large entities. But if you needed further information, I would be happy to send to you after this. Chris, did you have any questions? Um, I guess I just want to make sure that the buyer had, knows his his or her responsibilities. Absolutely, yeah. As, I mean, as this far is, as um, the affordable rentals. Yep, they um, all of all of the assumption of the regulatory agreement and everything um, involved in that is already embedded into our legal docs that are basically contingent for sale. So everything in there yeah. should already be agreed upon. So just double checking. Yep, I know it's an important thing. I understand. It's very that. important. Yes, <laughs> very. I, yeah, we need more of it, right? I think that's the general consensus across the country. So um, it's definitely a good thing. Mm -hmm. 
Margaret, were there any other questions that you had? Questions, um, comments? So Allison, you've prepared a resolution um, for the board's uh, signatures. Now, I guess my only other question would be, I would like, I, I would like the board to see confirmation um, or DHCD's acknowledgement of the, um, of the notice. Yeah, so cool. I have not heard back from them in regards to say approval or anything of the okay. sort, but I can um, follow up with the contact that we have just to ensure they received the notice. And then um, we could provide proof of their notice to you once um, once received, like the okay. report. So I think in that particular case, I would, um, I would recommend that the board, um, if it's so inclined to um, accept um, the notice, to accept the notice subject to confirmation of D, um, DHCD's receipt of the notice. I, I like that, so moved. Second. All right, just busy taking notes, all right. Uh, motion and a second, uh, lots of questions. Uh, any other questions for Allison and or Margaret? All right, let's put it to a vote. Stone aye. Hawkins aye. Keith aye. Go, Allison. Yay, Allison. Thank you. Yay. So, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so I will have the, um, I'll ask the select board members to come in and sign this. And um, meanwhile, if you could email us DHCD's acknowledgement of receipt, that would be great. Yes, once I, once I dig that up, I will send that your way. I appreciate it. All right, excellent. Yeah. Thank um, you, Allison. You. Appreciate the yeah. wait. No problem. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. You too. Nice Bye. meeting you in person. <laughs> All right. I know. She's, yeah, she's frozen. There she go. All right. So we are getting down to the end of this 8.33. Board questions, comments, liaison updates. I'll go last. Uh, I'm good. Um, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, one thing I did forget from my phone call with Brenna was that she updated me on the fact that she has put in half of the spirea in the center of town um, because the weather has not been cooperating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, but she will get to it. She just wanted to make sure that we knew that, you know, she's she's getting there. And I also wanted to ask whether the board wanted to, um, put the TA goals and objectives back on so that we could just take a vote at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yep, yep. Absolutely. On how many? <laughs> I'm going to limit it to ten or less. How's hey, that? Yeah. No, no. And I think that's I think that's my, that's my feeling. <laughs> no, that's fair because any more than that is kind of unrealistic. And then as Margaret and the board ticks them off, then other ones that were down here, you know, come up. That's right. We want to make them realistic. You know, goals should be smart, and one of them is you know measurable and timely. So that's right. Um, we want to have that. Okay. All, All right. right. Chris, I'll I'll uh, remember that for our uh, August night. All right. That's okay. all I got. All right. Um, so I have a question for Concom. Uh, so right now, Concom re has two openings. Uh, which brings them down to five. And at times there are people who cannot attend, people are on vacation. So technically with a board of seven, their quorum has to be what, four? Uh, with that, so I know that they ran into some problems last week, they needed to cancel. Like energy, is there any way that we could look into potentially reducing the number for the quorum? So if we leave it at five, uh, and then if they fill a position up, they fill a position up, but I don't want to hinder them in not being able to meet and keep postponing uh, just because life happens. When the, oh, if I may, when the mm -hmm. town accepted this statute, um, chapter 40, section 8C that governs conservation commissions and their composition, um, the, it was uh, accepted um, on March 5th, 1962. The town meeting proceedings from that meeting should specify the composition of the committee because this, uh, the statute itself says shall consist of not less than three nor more than seven members. The proceedings would have identified the number of members the town was going to go with. So we'll have to dig and get those uh, town meeting proceedings from 1962. Oh, I was born then. <laughs> okay. Not me. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, that's good. All right. I'll let them know. I told them that I would, um, you know, check into it. As of now, they still haven't picked, uh, because they canceled last week, they still haven't picked a um, uh, chair. So right now, Carolyn McDonald is acting as interim uh, until they can get, uh, get up and running. Let's see. Uh, Rec. Uh, uh, Do you want to talk about tree stands? The, oh, yes. Let's talk call? about tree stands. So at the meeting that I was at, uh, they were talking about potentially developing a policy for tree stands. You know, there was concerns that it, the tree stands were going up on conservation property. Uh, apparently, there's some Massachusetts law that requires tree stands to come down at a certain period of time. And conservation would like uh, some type of policy to show that tree stands do not open towards the trail uh, for obviously, you know, fear, maybe a, a brand new hunter sees something coming down the trail, thinks, oh, big deer, and it's just a person. Uh, so I know that they have uh, looked at another town's um, deer stand policy. So they were just wondering, A, what they need to do with it if they do develop it. Does it need approval by insert other departments here? Yeah. So um, under that same statute that I just referenced, um, it, it, no, it um, specifies that the commission can adopt rules and regulations governing the use of land and waters under its control. Uh -huh. So they can absolutely establish policy for conservation lands. Yep. Question is, I, I think, a practical one. Um, should this be run by the police chief? Yeah. Example, you know, for any comments he might have or any other local reviewers. Okay. All right. I will let them know. They're meeting next week. Uh, but what I can do is shoot a note out to uh, Carolyn and her um, committee and just kind of let them know. Um, recreation, they had sent an email to all of us last week asking what it would take for a highway to go down and plug um, plug the holes that are in the courts. And that was really my visit, uh, need for my visit to go down and talk to highway. And even though I know that highway is super busy and that it soups to the bottom of the list, I just wanted to get an idea if they could ever have the time to do that. It's just not as easy as pulling up the wheelbarrow that has the tire in it and just dumping it in the hole that it's digging up the hole, it's fixing whatever's going on in the hole, filling the hole, you know, flattening the hole, going back the next day, uh, make sure that everything is fine. Rinse and repeat for every crack that there is in the tennis court. So obviously time, uh, very time consuming, not a priority issue. Uh, I relayed that to Rec and actually Highway had let me know that uh, they believe Tommy Doerr's son was part of an Eagle Scout project to do some repairs to the basketball court on that. So I sent information uh, to REC uh, to hopefully, uh, you know, maybe push them in that, in that direction. But they understand that highway is strapped right now. But um, at least I did want to let them know that it really isn't just as easy as dump and pour and flatten for that. We, we, we actually have done that before also. Dump and pour? In, in years past, tried to fill the cracks yeah. with asphalt yeah and it and it doesn't make it as um, a perfect a, a court as and look it, it did it again so and the thing is too i mean you look at the court you put the ball down and it rolls down towards the pond so even if you fixed <coughs> you know the crack you're still kind of running downhill um you know when you're chasing the ball but you know we'll see what uh wreck kind of like do. a house kind of like a house <laughs> where the kind of like a floor. that's correct Build it on the side of a hill and settles. <laughs> and you know what? If any of us uh, had been in that pond, no, never to go back in there again. Um, let's see. <laughs> Earthworks, you know what, Margaret? I'll reach out to them again and ask them if they can kind of sort of giddy up, take a look at the um, two documents that Amy had already looked over from KP Law to get their input. Uh, energy, I know that they met last week. Um, I unfortunately forgot and did not attend, but I did attend an NEI training on understanding and setting up uh, reports. Look at Margaret all like smiling and happy. It's basically um, reports that show usage for uh, gas, electricity and such to the town. Something that Judy Booman uh, had done when she was a former select person and also on the energy committee. So just trying to step in and help out with uh, 
with that uh, so that we can continue to qualify for a green community. And that's all I got. Yeah. Oh, and there was there was one other question about uh, spectrum that had come in today from Northbrook um, Village, and I forget the gentleman's name. Apologies, Rich, Rich, Richard, Marini, Rich Marini. Thank you. Um, said that he had already asked at one point, really didn't get anywhere, but there was no harm, and he was going to try and reach out again so that we could help our seniors. And then, as just a reminder to anybody that in 2020, there's only two complaints from the town of Berlin to Spectrum over billing or service. And that uh, I've shared a couple of different places, the, mm -hmm. the form that you could fill out to get. I obviously won't get the 2021 report for another you know, 14 months from now, but uh, it is hard when the town does any negotiations with these places if there's no complaints. Oh, well, that's what we get. Good point, Scott. Maybe we should provide the form to that person. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I've also, you know, and, and I'm sure, you know, Chris has seen it too, that there are concerns, we will call mm -hmm. them, um, that come in on Berlin Neighbors Connect, our unofficial Berlin page, where people seem to chat more there than anywhere else. And I've gently reminded people that if you'd like to stand up and help out either on the advisory committee or even cable access, that there are openings and to come forward. Um, with that. So I think it would be a lot more beneficial to try and come together and work as a committee than to um, stand in Facebook and just complain how bills are going up, you know, $20 every other month. But that's just me. All right. Mary, I know you've waited patiently. I, I just found that 1962 um, provision. Okay. So it's five members, unless it's been amended since then. So somehow it's ballooned to seven with two alter or two associates, they call them. They're not true voting alternates. They're just basically in training. Yeah. So Go. Yeah, I'll send it to you, Margaret. Thank you. All right. Well, that's awesome news for them. If it's five, then uh, they'll be good to go. Appreciate you looking up that, Mary. All right. Uh, any other boards, comments, questions, updates? I just have one thing to add, Peg, on the conservation. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe I don't. <laughs> oh, OK. So the Conservation Commission's minutes of July 7th actually indicate that they did vote the policy. So maybe they can just be invited if, they, if they'd like to share the policy with local okay. reviewers. They could always amend it, you know, okay. just have others take a look and see if it's Is there any uh, questions? If it's appropriate. If they, OK, yeah. cool. All right, I'll reach out to Carolyn. All right, uh, not seeing a need for executive session, I will very much entertain a motion to go. So moved. Second. Boom, chakalaka. All right, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Margaret, again, right. welcome back. We missed you. Uh, Stone Thanks. Eye. Hawkins Eye. Heath Eye. With that, we'll see you in a couple of weeks.